What's up, everyone? How are you doing this fine Sunday evening? Well, not too much fine. It's raining out here as usual. It's like a monsoon all the time here in northern Illinois. Today, we're talking about motorcycle rallies. My opinion on the good ones and your opinion on the good ones. And I, I was looking at this ride share little article about what they listed they liked as far as motorcycle rallies so we're gonna go over that one and a few other ones so get ready button up man we're in the fall schedules every sunday at 8 p.m central standard time we're gonna get moving live baby here we go Okay, let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about it. What I think is a good rally. It's not going to be the same as what you all think a good rally is. We hear about it all the time. These Daytona, Sturges, Myrtle Beach, Laconia. I really don't consider that. You know, I've been to Daytona and a couple other big ones. But I'm a type of guy who really likes the small stuff. I'm talking about you're going camping, you got a bunch of friends around, you're partying, you're getting drunk, you're getting naked, you're, you know, you're doing all kinds of devious stuff. And it's hard for that to happen at a major rally because you have so many damn cops around. That's one of the biggest turnoffs for me is the police presence and i'm talking about you have a million undercovers you got a million uniformed officers it's like how the hell are you gonna have any damn fun at all with them type of people there but i get it i get it people want to try a major rally at least once in their lifetime Daytona was enough for me, man. I had more fun outside of Daytona than I actually did on Main Street or any of that stuff. Because it's just packed. It's like unbelievable packed. And you can't even see any tits because they're too busy giving tickets out for that. That Then, you know, you come up with all the paint and stuff like that for a woman's, uh, the cover her up and stuff. Then it's like... Damn, man, that, that's false advertising. That ain't no fun. What the hell's wrong with you people? You covering them up with that. I didn't want to see a phoenix. I wanted to see areolas, man. That's how much that law enforcement at these rallies have really ruined things. They really have. They, they're, they're blocking, man. You can't have no fun with them. So, the smaller stuff I really liked, and it's disappointing that a lot of these articles that they do talk about rallies, they never mention the smaller stuff. It was funny. Easy Riders, huge, huge back in the 90s. I went to uh, the Morris one. Nothing extraordinary, not thousands of people there. What a good time, camping, uh, partying. It was inside of a fairground, which kept all the blue uh, people away, if you would. And it was fun. And I think it grew and grew and grew where it was no fun at all anymore. Uh, Chillicotti, they lost it over there. I think it went down the street with uh, the rodeo. But as you had this influx of different type of riders, it seemed like it was toning down a lot. So I looked at this thing, and maybe you guys have heard it, and they give some pros and cons. Uh, well, take Daytona for uh, example, and then you got Bike Toberfest and stuff. There are pros where huge crowds spread over a wide area, bike racing events, great weather. 
which is true. I really do like the bike racing events. I love the weekends, just the weekend rallies where you got hill climbs. If you've never been to one of them events, you're really missing out. You know, they have one south of me here, and it's the Oregon Riders, and they put on a fantastic weekend of nothing but motorcycles going up that damn hill. And it's a big party. You don't have law enforcement on your ass all the time. It's just having fun with friends, your clubs, whatever it may be. You're kicking ass, having fun, getting drunk, laying on the sun naked. That's when you know you went to a good biker rally is when you have women running around naked and nobody bugging them. You know, the beads and stuff like that. I heard uh, from a couple of listeners uh, about Hog Rock. And Hog Rock, I guess, is uh, it's in southern Illinois. It's by Kentucky, I believe it is. But Hog Rock, ha they talked about how that is the closest type of event that somebody like me would remember how it used to be. It's nothing but deviance, the whole rally. It's bring your own beer, no cell phone service, a bunch of debauchery, bunch of pillaging. You got to love something like that. And a couple of the listeners, you know, they would take pictures, stuff like that. And it kind of makes you miss that kind of stuff. Because one thing with the motorcycle rallies is they grow. Like Sturges and Daytona, they were shit rallies. Well, I'd have to say Sturges was a shit rally when it first started up. And then as the popularity of that rally and the word got out, then it just morphed into a giant behemoth. Now it's like, damn, you need a couple thousand dollars just to go to a rally like that. Now, if you go to a hill climb, you're only, what, 100, 200 bucks for the weekend? But not these bigger ones. And that's where, I guess, the different style of riders come in. Where there's a lot of guys and gals, I have to say gals, because I pissed off. Oh, Tuesday, it's coming. I pissed off a bunch of riders or uh, riding clubs on my other channel, and all I've heard is the crying and whining, so I figured i put kind of like a response video on this channel. That way they can all see it. I'm always pissing on Wheaties, man. Not to mention, I kind of pissed off China Doll yesterday. You know, she was going out, getting ready, go out dancing and stuff like that, and I warned her. I did. I warned her. Because she has this Eeyore is her favorite stuffed animal. I was like, I'm going to hang Eeyore, man. And she didn't believe me. She comes home a little tipsy to Irvy, And she sees Eeyore hanging from her phone cord. So Hollywood is in the doghouse right now. And by the way, you can see us go back and forth. Everybody knows Monday through Friday on the radio station. Going back to, and I'd like to get your guys' little uh, participation here in the chat room. Uh, which favorite rallies do you like? Like Hossman 78, Little Sturges in Kentucky was a good one. Now, I've heard it started out really good. Really, really good. But then I've been hearing that the rally has been blowing up. I don't know how true it is. I haven't been to it. Uh, but that's what I'm hearing. It's blowing up. I guess you can call it what? Uh, the Southern uh, Sturges Rally? Something like that? Dancing Queen. Yeah, right, Gio? Oh. <laughs> uh, there's other ones. Let's see here. What else do they claim out here is a good one? Well, you know, then they talk about Laconia. 
and I think their definition that they're really trying to say what a good motorcycle rally is, is how long that it lasts. You have Sturgis two weeks, week for Daytona and stuff. But again, it's like you have to take out of your retirement savings to go to one of these damn things because they're just so expensive. I remember walking up the vendor booths at Daytona, and that was, what, 20 years ago? And everything was affordable. Now, I hear from followers, listeners, whatever, that it's obscene with what some of these vendors charge for. And that's because the city has its little chubby fingers in everybody's pockets. That's why the prices went up. And it's truly, it kills the mood, if you know what I mean. I talked about Sturges, where every day they got a tax collector going to the vendors. Now, it never started out that way. But once they get so big and the city gets so involved, it starts killing the vibe. And that's why... Everybody says you have to at least do Sturges once. And I really have no desire to do something like that, especially with the numbers of bikers or riders or motorcycle enthusiasts that go there. You're looking at what? 450 to 500,000 people that go there? What kind of fun are you going to have? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kyle, Laconia is the only bike week event I have been to now that I live in North Carolina and I only live four hours from Myrtle Beach. I'll be checking that out. Uh, yeah, China doll. Yeah, yeah, you are. Holly. I'm in a doghouse. I hung that Eeyore, man. I told her. I warned her. <laughs> I warned her I'd freaking do that. Uh, Steve. Uh, Sturgis is overrated. I can feel the hate. Yeah, she she hates when I do stupid shit. Uh, do you guys and gals think it's overrated? Have you been there? Now, see, I've watched some of the videos uh, with Professional Monkey, and it seems like, just like Daytona, that if you go in the outskirts... And in the campgrounds, that's where all the partying's at, is at the campgrounds, which is real cool. The problem I see is once you leave the party, you know, is there a lot of offifers there? A lot of, you know, blue little piggies running around? And I don't think that personally, now this is just me, it's not, you know, this is just my opinion. Why would I want to spend so much money at these rallies that are corporate sponsored? And again, I don't, I love vendors making money. Anybody, the little guy that can make some money, go for it. But when it gets taken over by these corporations, then all of a sudden they put their rules into place. They don't want nothing that's going to ruin their brand. So what happens? The city gets involved and then the damn cops get involved. Uh, let's see here. Poemoto. Uh, Leesburg. Anybody ever been to the Leesburg one? I heard that one uh, too. And Brian, the big rallies are overcrowded. That's what I was saying, man. How, how do you go to Sturges and actually have a good time? When there's 450, 500,000 people that are there. And the, I heard the Black Hills are some of the best rides in town or in the state. But how do you take a ride like that when you have so many people on the same route as you? That's a big question for me. And then, yeah, you want to go see Mount Rushmore and all that good stuff. But you probably have to wait in line to go see that. I just couldn't do it. Uh, Gio, my man Gio, even though he's a Southsider and he likes the damn White Sox, he's still cool. 
uh, I'm going to start a rally in my basement, but only broads are allowed. Is that why you've been trying to sneak in the China Dow's uh, women-only uh, group over at Facebook? You're a freak, man. You're a freak. That's all I have to say, Gio. You know, you have to be a freak to like the White Sox. That's all I have to say. Uh, riding too fast. I would like to go to Sturgis, but I would camp out and to just ride out there uh, in Deadwood. Now, one thing that a lot of people do talk about is the camping on federal land, BLM land, I think it is. I guess you can camp there for free for two weeks or something, then you got to move. Uh, I don't know if there's any of that up in South Dakota. I would assume so because what a what, two people live up there or something? I have no idea. I know it's cold. See, I bitch and complain in the winter here in northern Illinois, but I hear it's cold up there. So I don't know why anybody would live up there. Uh, but there have to be, you know, some type of BLM land out there where you can camp out. But the question then becomes, can you party? Can you party? Now, I remember a lot of the older guys that taught me, because they were mostly 60s, 70s Vietnam era guys, and they would talk all the time about their weekend getaways. Their biggest weekend getaway was going to forest preserves or the woods, getting a little party with 8 to the 10 people, and the party would blow up. Where by the end of the night, you're looking at, you know, 40, 50 people there and all the debauchery starts. That's the kind of, and you know what? I've been to tons of them and it's really a different type of feel, if you know what I mean. Very different type of feel than say when I went to Daytona. It, 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 it just felt more pure, if you will. You know, it, it's like somebody that's, you know, my generation or older, It it's more comfortable than going to one of these major rallies where you see all the rubbers and all that stuff. And by the way, guys, if you don't know what rubbers are, no, I'm not the one, talking about the ones you put on your song. I'm talking about rubs, you know, my new nickname for them are rubbers. So... It's kind of hard to be around them people, okay? It, it really is. It's like one of these rubbers will come up to you, say, in a bar. And they want to buy you a beer or a drink, whatever it may be. Don't take it. Don't take it. Because the next thing you know, he's going to go around the whole damn bar Oh, this is a friend of mine. This is a friend, you know. Wait a second. I don't know who the hell you are. We're not friends. But they want to get close to the real deal, if you know what I mean. So be careful of that when you're, you're in one of these major rallies with the bar. Having these civilians or rubbers coming up to you trying to buy you a beer. Just be careful, man. Be careful is what I say, man. Uh, Geo enjoying the last days of summer in Chi Town. <laughs> what summer? It's like you know what the summer went so damn quick, and I don't know if it's because you know China Dow's pushing fifty, and I'm still you know the young buck looking good and all that stuff. You know they say age before beauty, but maybe because you know, she getting a little older and things are getting a little faster and passing by a little more that uh, it seems like we don't have any damn summers. And now, like Dark Souls said, we're looking at probably a bad damn winter this year because we've had so much rain up here. And by the way, with rain, does that ruin your rally experience? That's a question I always like asking people if it's raining too much or it's nothing but mud in your campground. Do you get pissed off or you do you go out there and enjoy it, man? Throwing your old lady through the mud on the slip and slide and getting all crazy. 
that's the stuff I remember when I was younger. Now I try to do it, I have a heart attack. That's what I'd say. I'd have a heart attack, man. I'm just at that age now where I can't do all that, you know, youngin stuff anymore. Uh, Frogzilla, you better hide the shovel. <laughs> you know what? With them, man, they're always trying to kill me, man. You know, her, China Dow and my sister-in-law threatening to uh, feed me to the pigs and stuff like that. I don't understand, man. I'm just, a, you know, a beacon of freaking funniness. And they just, like, take things too damn personal. It ain't my fault I hung Eeyore. Come on. He was looking at me. Uh, Brian, uh, Farmer's Almanac says it's going to be a harsh winter. Probably. And last year, I had it so bad with cabin fever, it was craziness, man. It was craziness. I felt like I was in the black hole or something. I don't know how you guys get when it comes to wintertime. In, well, this is in the north, because all you jerk-offs that live down south and southwest, west, in the nice weather... I really don't like you because you get to do it all year and I got an old lady that cries and whines she don't want to leave the town we're in. I sit there and tell her, you know what? We can move here. It's a lot cheaper in the sun all year round. It's like, man, what are you talking about? She, she looks at me with a double head. I was like, there is more to the world out there that we can explore, you know. And I don't have to go through a Chicago frickin' winter anymore. You know, it gets cold, man. It gets cold. What other one did they have here? They had, well, the Rot Rally, I heard, is really badass. So I have to say, if there's a rally I want to go to that's a, uh, big and... It has to be the Rot Rally. It would have to be that one because I've heard so many damn good things about this rally that it piques my interest. It really does. It has a lot of music in there. Uh, I guess it's very adult orientated. Very. <laughs> Those are the ones I like for adults. You know, there's one rally or one camping event, and you can look this up. It's uh, Camp NCN. They have a before and after Sturges bike rally. And then it's been featured in Outlaw Biker in the early 80s and 90s, and it's still there. And it's nothing but a bump fest, man. I'm talking, this goes to the extreme, where you got threesome, foursome, fivesome, groups, everything getting in there, getting busy, all around their hollies. So that's something I like. I, I got to do that one. But as far as the Rot Rally, I, I've just heard a lot of good reviews about that one. I really have. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brian, do you put your bike into winter storage? Yeah, right in my garage. Uh, you know what? I'm not 21, 22, 23 anymore. Uh, I'm an old freaking, uh, dude now. And I'm not getting out there in, you know, below zero weather, 20, 30, 40 degrees. That's for you youngins to do. I won't do it. I've been there, done that, and the arthritis in the knees and everywhere else, I don't deal with it. But yeah, I put it up uh, in the garage and stuff like that. Actually, I got the Dyna and the Boulevard. See, the Boulevard's my favorite bike, but you know, I do have the Dyna for the in-town trips. Basically, all I do is change all the fluids and you know, throw it on a freaking uh, battery tender until it's time to go out. One thing in the winter stage that you don't want to do, especially if it's uh, too cold out, is run your bike. You know, once you put it in storage, put it in storage. Don't run it because you'll crack something. I had a lot of uh, buddies that have done that stuff. 
I have. Have you ever been to Smokeout Rally? No, I haven't, uh, Brian. Where's that one at? I haven't even heard of something like that. Uh, yeah, see, Geo does it too, man. He knows Chicago. I, I can, like, any of you Southern boys want to come to Chicago during, a, say, a January or February winter? And after it snows, see if you ride on the streets. I, I, I just uh, like to see if you do that. Uh, the Indiana, they have the boogie. Where's the boogie at? You know, you guys are bringing up stuff I haven't heard. Uh, Dark Soul, how's the knee? My knee sucks. <laughs> but you do got to remember with Hog Rock, they got actually two. One in the summer and then one in the fall. And again, I, I go see that. Now, I don't know if these are the prices, but it says $40 entry for the entire weekend or $30 for a Saturday only pass. I don't know if that's the case, but it is a bring your own beer event. So that means it's going to be a fun one when you have to do that. Now, I have heard good things about Bikers Blues and Barbecue out in Arkansas, and I guess that's a fall type of event. Uh, let's see here. They say, well, anything in the Lake of the Ozarks, man. Come on, that's a beautiful ride. Now, they call it a family event. I don't know, man. What do they mean by family event? Do they got kids going around on that one? I, I don't know. I don't think that's something I'd be into. Uh, but then they got like, uh, the Moto Beach Classic. Again, if it involves hill climbs, flat track racing, which is starting to make a good comeback. Flat track racing is really getting popular now, which is cool. I just wish hill climbs would, uh, get more popular. I think the reason with hill climbs is because there's not a lot of places that actually you can do it at anymore. You know, again, south of me, yeah, Oregon riders, they got a damn good hill over there. But it's mostly, you know, out west that they're doing a lot of the events and stuff. And I don't even know if you can camp at them. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. 40 miles from Louisville, Kentucky, huh? Frogzilla, rock and roll, man. You know what? I, you know, going down to Mississippi, I always love going through uh, the western part of Kentucky. It's just, you know what? Bluegrass is uh, the true one right there. Uh, Dark, so you're going to uh, Hog Rock, aren't you, in the, uh, the fall one? Let me know that. I think you're going to that one. And the prices, because I don't know if they got these prices right or not. Uh, but it is a weekend uh, thing from, uh, I think, what, Thursday to Sunday or Friday through Sunday. And they have some pretty damn good freaking bands out there. It's, you know, I know Sturges, what was it, the Buffalo Chip? They had, you know, I like Kid Rock and I like some of the other stuff. But I really like the smaller bands that aren't all blown up and stuff. I just think they give a better show than, you know, all the pyrotechnics that Kid Rock has to use or some of these other ones use. I guess it's more of a home feel, you know, when you have the smaller bands there. Uh, I'm taking it Hog Rock has that. So, you know, what I've heard anyway. And there's a lot of debauchery. It has to be a lot of debauchery. Uh, let's see here. Geo. Okay, it's Thursday through Sunday, Dark Soul said. And that's the fall one that's coming up for Hog Rock. Uh, Kid Rock is a good zombie. Was there their rock on? Uh, let's see here. News Now, running a motorcycle in Pennsylvania used to have a hell of event. The Sturges, Daytona, Laconia are all overhyped. I hear that a lot now. 
I don't know if it's the reach of the net that I've been hearing more of this, where people say it's overhyped, it's too expensive, it ain't no fun. I've heard a lot of that come from a lot of people that listen to me, that it's just not worth it. And it's just like a review on Amazon. You know, if they don't have enough good reviews, you ain't buying it. I think that's the way I kind of am with the rallies and stuff like that. Why should you go spend the damn money if you already have somebody that reviews it, you know? Uh, what's up, Tattoo Chris? How you guys doing? How you doing? Let me see if I, uh, you know, missed anybody here. Riding too fast is in here, Hans. Uh, they're having a born free rally in Texas this year. You know what, Texas seems like it's the place to party. You know, even though their profiling down there sucks the big one, it just seems like they know how to throw a motorcycle rally. Uh, you know, it, it does, that's what it seems like to me. Uh, what do you guys think of the weekends, say, at a dealership or... Well, let's focus on a dealership rally. Yeah, there's no camp in any of that type of stuff. There's a lot of rubbers hanging around. But at the same time, I like seeing the vendors that are there. Because let's be honest, man. A lot of the stuff that I like anyway, you can't get online, God forbid. Can't even get a stars and bars online anymore. But they got the cool stuff, the vendors. But I think they're pretty cool rallies, man. I don't like going on the rides. There ain't no way. We went to one this year, and I was like, man, look at all them rubbers, man. I don't think they're going to be able to ride that stuff. And yeah, I don't like riding with people I don't know. Corey, Arizona Confederation of Motorcycle Clubs. Sponsors right on the river, November 3rd through 6th, Winkle, uh, what is that? Winkleman Flats Park at the, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, well, there you guys go. If you're in Arizona or something like that, uh, the Confederation of Clubs is sponsoring uh, the ride on the river. And those are the type of events you, you really want to go to is when the Confederation of Clubs sponsors something like that. I'd hit it. Uh, let's see here. Tattoo Chris. Dealerships are posers these days. You know what I miss? And I still have this embedded in my memory. It is late 90s. And we had this dealership in Villa Park. It's Wildfire uh, Harley. Now, its present location with all this Disney bullshit is on the right-hand side of the road if you're coming down North Avenue. It used to be on the south side of North Avenue. And it was one of them dealerships that when you walked in, it was a small thing. You just smell all the gas. You can smell the rubber from the tires. It was so damn dirty that you were like, oh, hell yeah, man. That's what it is. But when they started opening up these dealerships and it went across the street, it lost all its luster. That's kind of why I like going into the independent shops because... Of just that. It has a better feel to it. You know, they got parts all over the damn place. They got no way to organize them. Uh, so you're going through dumps of parts just to find something. We even, I think it was Chinadown. Uh, yeah, Chinadown when we were covering the King of the Road over at the St. Charles uh, dealership here in Illinois. That thing was like Walmart size. Yeah, they had all kinds of freaking motorcycles and stuff all over the damn place, which was cool. But at the same time, it was like a freaking Disneyland. I just don't see it. 
I don't see why they would go that route that big. You have the company mandating that all the dealerships do that. But at the same time, they don't want to sell anything other than CVOs. So how the hell are you going to pack a building that only a few can afford to get, man? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Yippin'! What's up, my man? Laconia, America, Biketoberfest, Run with the Colors, Hot Springs, uh, Campgrounds at Night, unless the local co club have good bands. That's what I would recommend, is... If you know any of the clubs and stuff at some of these big things, you know, ask for an invite or, you know, go to their open uh, house thing during the rally. And they usually have the best damn bands around. Best bands. So, yeah, and they know how to party. Uh, you know, it happens. They know how to party. Uh, Florida is heaven's waiting room. Rock and roll. Now, I heard, you know, I I got family that lives down there. And I've been there during winter time. But they say Florida stay away from in the summertime. Too hot, too muggy, screw that. And that's just like Arizona, man. Uh, a lot of my old friends are moving to Arizona right now. And it's like, are you freaking crazy? The freaking roads are brown. And you know why they're brown? Because it's so damn hot out there. I don't want to hear about no dry heat crap, man. Screw that dry heat. That shit is hot. Okay? When you can freaking crack an egg and fry it on the sidewalk, that's too damn hot. There ain't no reason for that shit. Uh, you know, I guess they stay in all day and go out at night. Who knows, man? Screw that. Arizona, I heard, is hot. You know, woo. They in Las Vegas. No wonder it's called Sin City is because everybody's there at nighttime and there ain't no damn way they want to go out during the day. Gio, you love the heat. Screw that shit. No, that's too hot. It, you know what? It's as hot as out there and the devil needs damn lemonade out there. That's how freaking hot it is. I remember I was going out to Washington State and I had a layover in Arizona, getting off the plane, it gives you that big freaking wall of freaking heat. And I was like, you're just freaking nuts, man. There ain't no damn way I'd die out here. Uh-uh, screw that. Plus, you know, with all their freaking uh, BS, let's conserve energy crap, your air conditioner goes out in the middle of the day, it's 200 degrees out, screw that. I don't need that kind of... Uh, you know, stuff in my life, you know, too much stress in my life. I don't need that. Uh, let's see here. Eric, my husky just got get by a skunk. Oh, he got sprayed by a skunk. That sucks. Uh, ain't received. What? Okay. You're killing me, man. You're killing me. Uh, what's okay. We're going to move on. Waving a hand from Washington State. What's up, buddy? Uh, Eric, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. If you're negative 160 in your bank account, go to a corner, man. See if you just sell yourself. Maybe you'll get a couple bucks out of that deal. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. You know, I don't know what to tell you. If you're out money, go to a corner. You know, put some lipstick on. You know, some eyeshadow. And then maybe, you know, you make yourself a couple bucks. Who knows? Or you can do that at a rally, too. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you get a lot of lot lizards at some of these rallies, man. Especially the smaller ones. When the guys are, you know, going through and they stop at a truck stop and you get one of these freaking uh, lot lizards on the back of the bike. Next thing you know, she's out at the campground making her some money. I believe in working women. I do. They can do what they need to do to make money. But if you have to, you know, you have no money right now, that's what I say. 
you know, put some makeup on, go to the corner, or go to the truck stop. You might be able to do something like that. Uh, see you later, uh, Dark Soul Man. Uh, <laughs> Tattoo Chris, us truckers won't tell. <laughs> Oh, my goodness gracious, man. Goodness gracious. You know, I do feel sorry for you, but, you know, why are you bringing up money here? You know, that's just what I have to say. This is about motorcycle rallies, and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but then, uh, finally, they got, what is this, a Roscoe's Chili Challenge? Have you guys ever heard of this one, Roscoe's Chili Challenge? I guess it's in Lakeland, Florida. And it's November 3rd through the 5th. And I guess it started off as a, a chili uh, cook-off between Roscoe Tomlin and Little Hank. You know, wink, wink. I don't know why they call him Little Wank, uh, Hank. It's either, you know, it's funny. They call him uh, Tiny or something. And they're like freaking 500 pounds of nothing but muscle. Or you maybe, you know, somebody seen little Hank taking a pee at a urinal and, you know, he got his nickname. But I guess this one is, let's see here, the third through the fifth and it's been going since 1986. It's got great campgrounds, it says, great atmosphere. So rock on, man. The little ones. The little ones. Uh, Eric, thanks. Just needed to let, uh, let pressure off. Well, that's good. You know, if you need to let pressure off, you know, Hollywood's, uh, best thing to tell you is B and G. Okay. If you don't know what B and G is, I would, you know, ask somebody in the comment session. They'll really tell you what it is. You need to go blow, man. You know, blow something that way, you know, you get the stress off of you. Uh, Geo. Or Leo, what's up, my man? Rock out and high. keep up the awesome work. I appreciate it. Uh, there you go. Geo just told you guys whatever that is, man. I believe in that. I am the CEO of the B&G Club. Women do not like it. They actually hate my guts for putting this out there. But I'm trying to make men men again. Just saying. Just try and do it. Uh, they took your guns away. Okay. Okay, Eric. They took your guns away. Our, you know, and I have to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not a social worker. I'm not a bartender. I ain't a working girl. But what a, do you mostly desire from me right now, man? What do you desire to hear from me to help you in your situation? You know, I could, I guess I could, you know, it's a radio show. I guess I can hear your problems out. Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a boyfriend? Hey, I don't judge. I don't judge. I'm just asking. You're in Canada. Oh, there is a lot to say about that, and now I know why you're having so much trouble right now, because you're in Canada. And I hate to say this, a lot of people in Canada are freaks. They're a little weird up there, man. I don't know if it's because of all the snow, or you guys lie with polar bears, I don't know, but it seems like you're a little cuckoo up there, man, and especially those in the Montreal, Quebec region, you know, the ones who speak French, by the way, with this French talk, I can't even speak English, so when I cover it in biker news, it really sucks, but you're a little freaky up there, you know, maybe you need to hug your honey. Stay away from the polar bears, because I hear they're mean, and maybe life will get better for you. I'm not the best guy to give you advice on life, man. I always believe life, it has no mercy, and you got to do your best to live it, and it gives no breaks to anyone. 
So I know you're going through something right now, and hey, that's cool. You gotta, you know, release some pressure and stuff. But go release it on your girl or your boyfriend, or whoever you got. Again, I don't judge, man. I don't judge. Uh, Corey, 10 stabbed to death, uh, 15 injured today in Canada. That's not a big thing. That ain't nothing big. Chicago, that happens within an hour. And boy, you should see the killings for and the shootings for a weekend total here in Chicago, okay? Just saying. You know, uh, let's see here. Geo, Hollywood needs to come out with China line of cooter pockets so we can ship them to Canada. <laughs> I don't even know if they know what cooter pockets are, Geo. But Cooter Pockets is something that China Dow came up with because we are uh, passing a Dollar General or Dollar Gentral, as she says, and she just came up with Cooter Pocket. You know, it's your, your, your vagina, okay, ladies? It's called the Cooter Pocket instead of tacos. So that's where she came out with it. I don't know if they could handle that kind of stuff up in Canada, Geo, you know. I just don't. Uh, Power Moto, you guys are hilarious. Thanks, man. Uh, you know what? I really like doing the show with her because, one, I get to pick on her. Two, it is about everything under the sun. It just ain't about biker stuff. Uh, I get to talk about a lot of topics uh, like tomorrow's show is going to be about BLM and how freaking, uh, yeah, I can't say it on uh, YouTube, uh, how messed up they are. Let's just put it that way. I guess one of their board of directors was living off of the organization $10 million later. Oh, boy, is Hollywood going to have a lot to say on the show tomorrow. And it's Serial Killer Monday, man. You know, China's favorite thing. She's a heathen. You know, she's getting into lately this witchcraft stuff. And it's bad enough they're always threatening to feed me to the damn pigs, her and her sister. But now she wants to learn this witchcraft crap. She's a heathen, okay? I believe in the old man upstairs. I don't believe in this heathen stuff. You know, I don't want to be married to somebody that transforms into something green with a big wart on her nose. That's just not me. And I especially don't want to be married one who's going to make one of them dolls up and curse my ass and start putting pins in it like I'm a cushion. Not cool. Not cool. Uh, let's see your better run rock on. Uh, yeah, you can listen to it on our Discord server. And by the way, now that we're in the fall session of Insane Throttle, every Saturday in Discord, uh, I go on camera in the general chat with China Doll if she's around, and we just chat with everybody. Fun time. Oh, Lord, Hollywood. See, heathens listening to me. She's a heathen. What happened? You know, I had this innocent little woman, and next thing you know, she's talking to her sister, and I got it to where I got to worry about being cursed by her. Now, I do a lot of stupid shit. I piss off a lot of people. I get it. But I don't deserve to be cursed by no freaking heathen. I really don't. Next thing you know, she's going to have one of them pots in the middle making potions, to, you know, to try to kill me and stuff like that. Not cool at all, man. Not cool at all. Uh, Jeremiah, been away for long, been missing out. I'm sorry to hear that, man. You know, welcome back. Welcome back. We got Grizz in here. Uh, Rena, what's up, man? My boy, Big Red, is in town. Uh, Eric Parr is my name, folks. Uh, what's up? Uh, see, that's my crazy Canadian up there. <laughs> uh, Frogzilla, I'll throw some uh, holy water on you, Hollywood. You'll be all right. I hope so, man. 
Because China Doll's a freak. I don't know if you guys know this. But she's one of the biggest freaks out there. I cannot see, and I got to watch how I say this on YouTube. But any freaking woman that can use one of the massagers, if you will, for two hours needs mental help. Needs mental help, I'm sorry to say. So you have that drive, if you will. Combine that with this new interest in witchcraft crap. And then devoting a whole segment to serial killers on Monday. Now you know why I'm worrying to death here. Now you know why I got to worry. And, you know, you go out to something. Uh, we're going to be going out on our uh, vacation. Camping out. And we're going to have the SIL with, which is my sister-in-law. And I'm going to be sitting there with a crucifix everywhere. Okay? Everywhere. They're going to try to kill me in the, my sleep. I already know it, man. I already freaking know it. Uh, she got crystal and cards. No. Uh, not yet, but she will. But I'm telling you guys, two hours with that thing, that's just insanity, man. That right there is the definition of go to a mental health professional. It's just crazy. I know you women can go and go and go, but that's just ludicrous right there, man. Ludicrous. Uh, let's see here. Shocker. We have a weekend coming up soon. Yeah, we do. Uh, what is it? Uh, the 15th and stuff? Yeah. I'm going to have to be there with you two. You guys going to run around and screech like a little freaking witch? I don't, you know what? I'm kind of upset with you, man. Kind of upset with you teaching, you know, China Doll and getting her interested in all this witchcraft stuff. Next thing you know, I'm going to have a freaking pentagram freaking, uh, you know, branded into my forehead or something and turn me into something psycho, man. You know, uh, let's see. Oh, my God. Love it. I'm done. <laughs> Rena. Uh, it gets better, man. Uh, like I said, I can't say much on YouTube as far as, you know, the censorship and stuff. It's not like the old days, the way I was on uh, the lives. But if you go to the live shows uh, with me and China now, yeah, you'll get a buckle, man. Or you'll get pissed off. You know, you're either going to have fun on the show or you're going to get pissed off at me. That's just the way it always works. Uh, Doll Hollywood is a hoot. See? Now, that is a good person, China Doll. That's the way you're supposed to be to me. You're supposed to pump up my pride. You're supposed to make my ego big. But no, you don't. You get mad at me because I BNG, man. But see, we got somebody like Rena who appreciates Hollywood. She appreciates me. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. That's some good stuff right there. Maybe you can teach the two wicked witches, one from the East and the West, how to respect me. Uh, your shows are always good. I appreciate that, Jeremiah. Uh, it is really a blast doing those shows. Uh, anyway, guys, if you don't have anything else, we're coming up on the hour. Uh, check them all out on Discord, Rock On, Spotify. Well, cool, cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, tomorrow's Monday. We're still on the air, even though it is Labor Day weekend. Uh, you can catch uh, the reruns and all that stuff on the major podcast platforms. Tomorrow at 8. Story out. Motorcycle Club Clubhouse. There is another drive-by shooting at the clubhouses. That is at 8 o'clock a.m. Central. Then right after that, we go right into the show with China Dow. I'm really going to be picking on her tomorrow. Anyway, guys, gals, 
Thanks for uh, listening in. I'll see you live next Sunday, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll have some fun. Rock on. Mm-hmm.